Hello, and welcome to another episode of Pep Talks with Jeannie. I'm your host, Jeannie Pepper. I started doing Pep Talks as a way to inspire you to do intentional acts of kindness and to further the goals of hashtag Blaze It Forward. Over the past six years, Pep Talks evolved, and now I use it for interviewing key people in our community who volunteer at the next level. Some start foundations to further their philanthropic goals. Some work at some of the most influential and needed nonprofits. And there are others that dedicate their lives to causes in their local or even global community to make this world a better place. Today, I'm excited to have Keith Anthony. He's a positivity content creator with his own channel called What Could You Do? Welcome, Keith. Thanks for having me. So Keith, tell me, what inspired you to start making your own podcasts and um, your own channel, basically, you're making content? Yeah, so um, I created a web series called What Could You Do? And essentially, it focuses on the premise of what could you do to make the world a more positive place? And I go out and I interview game changers in the community that are at the grassroots level, finding problems that occur in their community and also finding solutions to those problems. And so I cover a wide variety of content from uh, diversity and inclusion to the environment to self uh, self awareness and self um, preservation, I guess, yeah. if you will. Yeah. And yeah, it's just it it was really important for me to create content that people can maybe be inspired by to plant a seed in the back of their minds of you know when you have those opportunities to do something good in the world, whether that's volunteering, whether that's making eye contact with somebody and smiling, starting a conversation at the supermarket to creating a nonprofit or a foundation. Uh, There's so many that so many things that each of us can do to make a positive imprint on the world. And I hope that my content inspires somebody to, to do that in their everyday life. And what inspired you to do that? Well, I'd spent the last, well, not the last, I spent 10 years working in television as an associate producer. And while working in the media industry, um, I found that there is, you you hear a lot on the news about what's wrong with the world and what, um, there wasn't as much positive news (laughs) on the mainstream news channel. And having been working in the media, I never got to produce content that was positive per se. (laughs) And so um, it was really important for me. I'm no longer working in television uh, full-time. I'm a flight attendant full-time, but um, I do this content creation in my free time as a passion project um, to to produce the things that I never, that had I stayed working in television, I would have produced myself, which would be more positive content. And so, yeah, I, I hope that it either, you know, inspires friends, family, the people that follow me, as well as all former colleagues in the industry that are still working in the media to hopefully inspire them to feature the news and, you know, keep people informed on what's going on. Those are all very important things, but it's equally important to show the good in the world and the great things that are happening in communities all across this country. Yeah. Well, I am a huge fan of yours and I got to know you because you reached out to me and my husband Gideon uh, when you first started doing these, uh, and we were delighted because we are, we love positive news and there's just not enough in this world. Um, I know that I started to become aware that there were other ways we could find it and that is just created ourselves. So I, I, I mean, basically that's why I'm doing this. What are some of the things that you're looking forward to doing with it? Yeah, I mean, right now I'm. It seems to be that I'm finding a lot of nonprofits <laughs> that are out there at the grassroots level actually doing the work. Um, I try and cover nonprofits that maybe some people haven't heard about, or foundations that maybe people haven't heard about. Um, and I, I think in the long run, I would love to. I mean, big goals <laughs> would be to make a mark in, in mainstream media to show that positive news does and can rate well, and there can be profit in it. And whether it does or not, it's the right thing to do. And out of a 24-hour news cycle, it wouldn't hurt for five minutes, if that, to be dedicated to good news every day or every week even. Um, that could make and shift the at the trajectory, I think, of this country. I think it's it could be discouraging when you see the worst of humanity on, on television, but also at the same time, there is the best of humanity out there. And I believe it's the responsibility of the media to feature that and show that, and whether it makes money or not. 
Is this I, the right thing to do? I totally agree with you. I find that, um, I mean, I have not been able to monetize the social media that I produce myself. And I think it would be great because I would love to be able to donate that money right. to the places that really need it. Um, but there definitely is a need for it. I know that, um, I mean, we have over 30,000 followers right now on our Facebook public group. So I'm hoping that although I'm preaching to the choir to those people, it's really important. And this is why I wanted you here on my on my show because I want those 30,000 people to to help us to get this out there and the more that they watch it and enjoy it the more we can show that there is a need for it and we can you know possibly get advertising for it in the future and we right. can create more of this content more positive content um, what are some of the things that you're looking forward to doing af after you get this up and going do you want to be the do you want to continue to actually do the interviews do you want to be more on the production side like what part of this is like the thing that you really enjoy um right now i'm like a one person show so yeah. i shoot i edit i record i'm on camera i'm interviewing i'm kind of doing everything yeah it's overwhelming at times because there's so many people that i have on my list to feature and i'm only one person yeah um with limited resources and so in a perfect world i would love to um have a collaboration of a team that yeah. I work with to handle the more technical aspects that I'm not as savvy with, which is like, you know, lighting, audio, camera work, all of the technical stuff so that I can really focus in on the interviewing, finding the stories yes. and putting it out there. And so long-term goals, I would love for, for to have a team that I can rely on that yeah. will help me produce more content that more people can hopefully be inspired by and enjoy. Well, I think that's an, a terrific goal. And if there's anybody out there that wants to do this kind of work with us, please make contact <laughs> with us, especially if you're local to Southern California, because yes. we have a, a team here that is in the Los Angeles area. And we would love to be able to create more of this content and provide it to the people that follow us. And You've got to catch um, Keith's work here um, on what could you do because it's not only is it positive, it can move the needle. I mean, Keith is providing us with um, content that is not only like helpful to learning about how we can help the environment, but also about what we can do as individuals to repair the world. And I mean, if there's not something more important than that to do right now, I don't know what there is. That is more important. If we're not repairing the world, what are we doing? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Ruining it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, no. And I just have to say like, like, thanks to you and Gideon. You were one of the first few people I reached out to when I first started this project. And, um, you were actually, I found about, I found out about the blaze it forward movement during the height of COVID when I was home and on my computer and trying to find positivity out there because there was so much darkness in the world. And I came across your story and the saw how you and Gideon were able to take, you know, such a, um, a tragic thing that happened and spin it into a positive. And if it, in my mind, I said, if, wow, if somebody can go through the worst of the worst of life and still smile and be positive and do good to others and create opportunities for other people, um, that really is what sparked what could you do f when I, first started doing all of this. And I thought, you know, there's so much that each of us can be doing that can make a positive uh, mark on the world. And you and Gideon were really the spark that made me think, what if I, you know, I worked in television for 10 years, I have all these skills of, of producing and what better way to create my own content that I never got to do when working in the industry. And um, seeing your story and seeing the great the goodness that you guys have done and put out there in the world really made me think i need to capture this i need to go talk to these people that are out there that are unsung heroes really and doing just amazing and, and positive things for the world so thanks to you for um seeing you know something in me and in my project for me to be able to have you as you know my first one of my first two interviews for the for the whole thing yeah well so. i thought that i well when you first approached me and told me that you wanted to do this i was like i was actually thrilled that there was somebody that wanted to do this and i mean it's, you're doing this without any help and this is not easy work i mean if anybody that's tried to produce something that that anybody would want to watch would right. know it is not easy to get people to to give you their time even sometimes yeah. Yeah. i mean be, yeah so but like in terms of my own philanthropy like we were philanthropists before and when i say philanthropy i'm not talking about people that just give money write checks <laughs> because you know anybody can write a check 
we're all philanthropists. I mean, we all buy Girl Scout cookies, but I mean, really the point is that being a philanthropist is about just loving humanity, like really, but not just like saying you love people, but like really like demonstrating that in, in a, in a way that is effusive and, and gives people hope. Because I think like what you were saying, like when you look people in the eye and, and recognize and give them their, even like, like I noticed like looking homeless people in the eye, talking to them, like it, it gives them dignity. Like yeah. they are seen and we, we can't ignore, like there are so many reasons why people become homeless. And I know like having family that lives in Los Angeles and seeing the homelessness population there, we don't really have it so much where I live here, here in Orange County. Um, it's, it's pretty well washed here. Um, but in Los Angeles, it's not, and they allow it and it's, it's, it can be somewhat extreme, right. um, in the way it looks. And it's, and it's again, the, an issue that is a huge problem for mm-hmm. the community. There are so many different solutions to fix this problem, right? Everybody has an idea of what they think is the best way to, to handle an issue like homelessness. Um, but the most important thing is, is we can't get so caught up in the problem without trying to find viable solutions and giving people the opportunity to, um, start, you know, start on yeah. finding ways to, to fix certain issues and problems. Cause it, yeah, there's nothing worse than, you know, history repeating itself and problems just kind of keep happening with no, no solutions to them. And, and that's what I'm finding when I go to interview people at the grassroots level, like they have so many different ideas of how to fix a certain problem. And they're just one little sliver of the big pie of what could be done, you know? And so, yeah. So, so yeah, like before we started this interview, I was asking you about um, why call it, why, what could you do? Like, and what would you do? You know, kind of like rolls off your tongue, but what could you do is like such a much more thoughtful question really. And, um, can you tell me about that? Like what made you choose that is the, is the title of your, your channel? Yeah. Um, I just think it came from what I asked myself during COVID when I was home and indoors and in a, you know, dark place, <laughs> yeah. um, trying to find positivity. And I was thinking to myself, what could I do to make a positive imprint on the world and, or show people that there is positive things happening out there in the darkest of times. And so it really came, it was, I was having a conversation with one of my really good friends who works, still works in the entertainment industry. And we were trying to come up with a good name for this series. And it came up in our conversation and she was like, well, there's a show called, what would you do? But what about what could you do? And that was just like a spark went off of like, well, that's what I've been asking myself for the last, you know, however many months, what could I do? And what better way to create a series to hopefully inspire people on what could you do? Yeah. What could you do to make the world a more positive place? Um, something small, something large. Yeah. Totally. Um, one of the things that you have in your, on your, each of your shows is you have a box and you yeah. ask people to put, <laughs> um, I, we're going to run a clip of that right now. Hey, 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 welcome back to another, what could you do? And this is your place to meet incredible people that are teaching us what you could do to make the world a more positive place. Fighting Arts is a nonprofit arts organization for grassroots. A Better Love Project is a 501c3 charity. It's an educational platform. And we're teaching people how to love in fierce, healthy ways. I am really proud of the individual lives we've been able to help, and the cats and the people. And what do they think you could do to make the world a more positive place? Contribute. I think that if everyone just contributed a little bit, we'd be able to solve a lot of the world's problems. I think in our relationships, we could be more gentle. When we... If you promote a little more faith. If you know someone out there making a difference in your area, I want to know about it. So be sure you reach out and tell me what they're up to. Until next time, I hope you see your day in a positive way. And as you can see, like, it's fun for the people being interviewed to, you know, they're put on the spot and, and they get to say, like, what they think they would like to see more of in this world. Is, that's, that's accurate, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was actually the first. So when I first came up with the idea for this web series, um, I went out to Runyon Canyon by myself and with a friend. I'm sorry. I had a friend with me helping me. um, And I just wanted people to choose one word that would summarize what they could do to make the world a more positive place. And that really, again, was just another thing that sparked what this whole series would unfold to being. Um, 
what was just meant to be like a kind of a social experiment <laughs> to see what people are, what information I get back from people. It's actually the very first kickoff episode um, is me. You'll be able to see me going out there and collecting all these words from strangers. Um, and I thought, you know, as I feature each nonprofit or each person that's out there making the world a more positive place, um, I just thought it's a good, it's, it's a cool way to um, not only spark people in their own mind to thinking, what, what could I do? Right. But also, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, I, I just thought it would be like a fun and clever way to incorporate that as part of the series, having been the one thing, the first initial thing that, um, that I went out there and filmed myself doing. So. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Thanks. Um, what was the first thing that you did for your channel and how did you come about it? Yeah. The first thing was, was going out to run in and, and talking to people and finding out, you know, during and the height of COVID yeah. <laughs> how to safely keep, like, keep your distance and whatnot, but still have a way to communicate and talk to people of like, Hey, there is positive light out there. Um, the first episode that I did was with a nonprofit called budding artists. And that was the kickoff episode to this whole thing. Um, and I was really inspired again by somebody who, um, saw a void in their community for, um, you know, preschool kids, the lack of really funding that exists for kids at that level to get specific type of education, um, to fully form themselves as an adult later on. Um, and certain neighborhoods still don't have, you know, free pre kindergarten for children. And, um, and so talking to them was, was really, really great kickoff. And then blaze it forward was my second episode that I got to interview you and Gideon. Um, so yeah, I, and I'll continue to cover different issues in, in the community and what people are doing to, to solve them. And, and, and the ends, uh, making the world more positive. Yeah. So. I, I, was talking to you earlier about the episode that you did on vermiculture, right. um, composting and, and environmental sustainability. Um, I first, that was a personal interest to me because my daughter and I became very interested. Well, I, she became very interested in it and I became her sous chef in the backyard, uh, helping her with that. Um, and that was like a really positive thing for us as a family to do. Um, I just thought that was really cool. What kinds of other things do you um, anticipate that you'd like to cover in terms of environmental sustainability, responsibility? Yeah, I mean, there's so many, there's so many topics and issues that I really, I'm really not closed off to anything. I think there, we see there's a lot of shortcomings, <laughs> I think, yeah. out there when it comes to a lot of different industries. The environment is one of them. Um, education is another. Um, mental health is another big one. Homelessness. Um, I mean, there's so many issues happening in different communities across the country. Um, I start here in LA and I, I, I live here. So this is the area that I'm starting. I would love to expand, you know, to go across the country and talk to different people. Um, but there's really no topic and no, there's nothing that's off limits that I'm not willing to put a spotlight on. Um, just because we need it. We need to see that there, you know, we can't get paralyzed by the problems and issues that we have in our communities. We have to support those people that are being thoughtful and creating opportunities for others, for themselves to try and fix some of the issues that are happening across, you know, the country. Yeah. Well, I think we should definitely rent a an RV and travel across the country. How awesome would that be? <laughs> How awesome would that be, you know, to right. be able to go across the country and find people in local communities and, and see what they're doing that's positive and helping to repair the world. Right. Because we have to. We right. don't have a choice. I mean, we've created a world with so many problems, and uh, we don't have solutions for them now. But the, when we, I, I mean, it's my belief that when we think positively and we, we vibrate at this higher level and think, you know, when we have this consciousness that there are issues with but that they are solvable problems right. that we have to work together. Talk to each other yes. sitting at a table with one yes. another, whether you agree or not yes. of how, how the, what the solution is or how to get there. Getting people to a table is so important to, you know, being able to get the word out or to collaborate with other people to try and find a, a great solution to some of the issues that exist. So. Exactly. A lot of people are struggling right now. Um, I mean, homelessness is an issue, but there are people that are struggling not to become homeless. Um, especially like where you live in Los Angeles, there's been, um, there was a writer's strike, a director's um, guild strike, and now we see um, SAG-AFRA has been on strike for a while, and really the industry's been shut down, and I know that there have been a lot of people that have been affected by that. Um, what do you think like are solutions for helping people like before they 
end up in homelessness, like people that are unemployed? Are there solutions and, and what do we do? I know, it's such a big question, right? right. It's like, what, what do you do to prevent people from going do? homeless? Yeah, yeah, what could you what do? What could you do? <laughs> um, I think there's so many, there's so many different approaches um, that has happened within this country that different communities have been able to do. Um, I think we should look to other countries to see how they've solved their issues yeah. of homelessness and whatnot. Um, specifically in LA, I do have, I have friends that work in the entertainment industry that were hugely affected by the strikes and not being able to work during that time. It's obviously very, very important for the strike to occur so that people can get a fair wage and fair rules for the work that they're doing. But at the same time, you know, it's having that foresight of, yeah, like what, what could be done to prevent somebody from getting there? I, you know, I wish I had the answers to all those questions, yeah, but I, I, know, I really put you on the spot. No, you're one. fine. But, but yeah. the important thing is, is going out and interviewing people. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Homelessness is probably an issue I have not covered yet on my web series because it is such a huge issue that I really want to give it the due respect to get different perspectives on what people think the right solution is to the problem. Yeah. Um, and so I, it is something that I will be covering soon that I will be probably dedicating more than one episode to. Mm -hmm. um, usually I've been focusing on one issue, one episode, but homelessness is such a big issue that I, it will probably have to be split up between a few. <laughs> right. Um, because there, in my own research, I have found there are many different people out there that think they have the right solution to it. And each one in their own right sounds it sounds right. I'm no, I'm no yeah. expert to it, but from an outsider looking in, I could see how each one is um, viable, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's getting those people, you know, to the right people in government and whatnot to take the chance on maybe something that seems unconventional, but that could really change people's lives and, and transform their living situation. Yeah, I know. Like in Orange County, I've been involved with an organization called um, Wise Place. And it's a homeless shelter for women. And I went there, we served meals there, and, and they really try to transition women who find themselves homeless for whatever reason. Oftentimes it's from because of domestic violence. Um, uh, but it also can become an issue for people that have elderly parents and can't care for them. I found that maybe at least 30% of the women that they had there were elderly women who were found on the street and didn't have anywhere to go. Their family wow. could not help them. Right. Um, so, and they're not really able to work anymore. They either don't have the skills or not really trainable. Um, and they're just, you know, they just really need help. They need, yeah. So this is, um, something that these organizations like Wise Place and other, um, transformative, um, institutions, foundations like this, what they do. And I, I'm actually going to try to get them here also for an interview. Is there anything else that you'd like to share while I have you here? You've been such a great host or not host, such a great, you have been <laughs> I know, such I'm a, not used to being I on know. the other side of the table here. Been, I'm usually on the one asking the questions. I know, right? So. You've been such a great guest today. And we, I've, I've really learned a lot from you. Um, I think like I'm very impressed just with your passion for providing positive news which is also yes. my passion right. um i think like we we definitely need to team up and and get an rv and travel that would be amazing i know yeah. <laughs> it'll happen it'll, one of these days this is going to have to be my my passion project is yeah, going to be that making sure. something like that happen but yeah what are some of the goals or things that you'd like to do in the future yeah no i'm um, just keep spreading the word like i yeah. said if i can just plant a seed in the back of if right now i have friends and family that follow my series there are some strangers too that i'm mm -hmm. sure come across it that i I don't know. Yeah. But it's just to, I would love to just continue planting the seed at the back of people's brain of constantly thinking, what could I do to make the world a more positive place? When you find those opportunities, they happen to us every day, whether we realize them or not. Yeah. It's just making you, the unconscious seem more um, aware. <laughs> yeah. And if they could say, Hey, I remember I saw Keith's episode this week was about this. When that opportunity occurs to do something good, you know when it's there. We all know when yes. those moments are happening. Absolutely. Yeah. And I hope that my series can motivate people to take advantage of those opportunities when they occur to, you know, be positive, do positive. And I think the world will be a, a better place um, if each of us can just be more aware of it, of each other and, and respectful and, and yeah. No, oh, absolutely. Well, I want to thank Keith for joining us today. Not only is Keith a guest on my show, but he is also part of our production team today. Um, much love and thanks to you. And don't forget to watch Keith on his channel, What Could You Do, on YouTube. And he's going to be putting these out every so often, more if you watch them. So please watch them, encourage him, because I love what he does. And if you love positive news, watch. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Oh, thank you. Well. 
That's been another episode of Pep Talks with Jeannie. Once again, I would like to thank our guest, Keith Anthony, for joining us today. Blaze It Forward is a campaign my family started to repair the world with kindness in honor of our son, Blaze, who was murdered in 2018. You can learn more about Blaze and how you can make a difference on our website, blazebernstein.org, or on our Facebook group, hashtag Blaze It Forward. This month, Blaze It Forward is working on creating positive content, social media content for you to enjoy and to increase the positive vibes in this world. Now you go out there and have a great day and do good. <music>